Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we just went, we just just gotten over, if you will, this heat spell here in, mm-hmm. in, in, in the state of Oregon, or better yet, the city of Portland. Outside the city of Portland, it was 60 some odd degrees down on the coast, and et cetera, et cetera. But now it's cooling off. Things are feeling much better. And I'm sort of reminded of like, uh, when I think about politics, it's kind of like the same thing. You know, it heats up, then it cools <laughs> down, then it heats up, then it cools down. And so anyway, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this hour. I, as you can see, my guest here is... As someone I've known for a number of years, Sharon Nassett, uh, yeah. very committed uh, person, very passionate person whenever she gets involved in something, even to the point that she's left her career off for a minute. She was in real estate big time, knocking on doors, knocking on my doors for that matter, and sort of gotten into this, uh, in this issue of, uh, of the crossing the river, the Columbia River, mm-hmm. i.e. CRC, if you will. You've seen her on the show once before, on several, several occasions anyway. But anyway, we're going to talk about that and, uh, and try to get a better feel of who, can, who, who Sharon is, get a, get a little background in terms of how and why she got involved in this process and where she's going now, and et cetera. So I think this will be good. And we need to do that, too, because we're all preoccupied now with the presidential elections right, right now, big, big time. As you know, you can't, you can't, you can't put the, you look at the newspaper or radio or, or TV and whatever. It's all about the um, presidential election, mm-hmm. and it's heavy. And so we're going to kind of like try to focus and educate you about something from a local standpoint here within the Pacific Northwest. And I'm talking about Columbia CRC, Columbia River Crossing. A lot of money has been spent on the front end of that. We were, I think we're approaching about $150 million or so. That's that, right here. More than that at this point maybe in time. Even more. And maybe even more. And in all due respect, these monies are not coming out the federal coffers. They're coming out the state coffers mm-hmm. of each state. And these are taxpayers' monies, and people are really concerned about those kinds of dollars, if you will. Sure, it creates some jobs, but the kinds of jobs and what and what is tension. You 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 wonder, you know, by this time you thought for 150 million dollars, the bridge should have been half built, <laughs> <laughs> or at least anyway, seismically retrofitted. Exactly, Some, yeah. something along that line. Uh. But anyway, Sharon, she and she you knows she's eager to get into this thing. You can see that right off the bat. But before <laughs> we get into that, Sharon, Sharon Nassett, by the way, welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay, good. good Bob's going to gonna probably be here very shortly. Oh, good. Uh, he's out and about uh, looking at the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at the bridge. But anyway, uh, uh, why don't we just spend a couple minutes on mm-hmm. the, the, again, everybody's kind of like, you know, where's this presidential campaign is going on? You got the pros and the cons and whatever. And i just like to just kind of just chat a couple minutes about that whole Certainly. piece. Certainly. I guess the latest, if you will, the latest is the big charge is that uh, uh, Tom was basically gave me the idea about this whole issue about R&R and D&D. I couldn't understand what he was talking about, but now I understand what he's talking about. The R&R and D, you remember that? R&R the one you and D&D? Yeah, you remember that one? Yes, yeah. <laughs> rich and royal. Yeah, or you, whatever. Ma- yeah you, you mentioned the fact that, um, well, well, I, yeah, I just kind of did. You know, sometimes you you want to just kind of you know, have a little fun with this business to a certain <laughs> degree because it's it's so tense right now, right? It's so tense out there right now. People trying to figure out what what's going to happen to me mm-hmm. if you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars or better. Mm-hmm. You know, you're banking on the R and R to to win this campaign. If not under, necessarily. But, I, I but, think but not everybody is looking with their point. wallet. If, on the other hand, if you're under $250,000, you're in the, with the D&D campaign. Somebody said, well, what is the D&D and what is the r and Well, in all due respect, you got uh, President Obama and you got uh, Vice President uh, Joe Biden. So I've been using the B&B on mm-hmm. that end of it. And on the R&R side, you've got uh, uh, former Governor Mitt Romney mm-hmm. and you've got uh, Congressman uh, Paul Ryan. Ryan. So that's the R&R part. So mm-hmm. it's the B&B and the R&R aspect of it. That's <laughs> the way I sort of look at this piece. And uh, the, I guess the highlight of today is the fact that uh, we got 79, 79 days before the election. Yes, we do. 79 days before the election. And Come I guess put. what's on the table right now, what was on the table previously was economics. It was about jobs. Mm-hmm. And then we've jumped from jobs, if you will, to taxes. We went to taxes, and everyone wants to basically want to know, uh, well, hey, we want to see uh, – uh, the the R and R taxes. Well, and the Republicans themselves have been just hammering Mitt Romney constantly about show us your taxes, just get it over you with. The Democrats have been been hammering. No, there's been several articles. Yeah, but not, not as much as the the D side. 
Are you one article from a prominent Republican is like, like hundreds. Like who? Oh, well, like uh, the the Reagan uh, this week uh, was one of uh, Reagan's uh, former uh, financial persons that came out with some, a big op ed piece. Right. Hey, I haven't seen him. Oh, All well, I actually. When you look at the CNN news, the Fox, and this, that, and that, it's always just the option. At, at, at the beginning of the week, there were several prominent, if you looked on the internet, there were all these prominent people that were coming up and saying things that weren't okay, so great. Okay. Well, Chris Wallace and, on, and, on Fox and, and is and what, what, what was surprising was is that they thought that, you know, because Republicans rarely necessarily attack their own, and it was pretty bad. Okay. But, but, uh, but you I do was, agree. It's, so it's, what, it's what do you think about the young staffer, or, or I shouldn't say young staffer, but the staffer who... Uh, when they were talking about this person uh, who needed medical care for his mother, his wife, uh, she said, well, had they been in the state where Romney had been governor before, he would have been taken care of. Hmm. Well, I, I didn't see that. The only thing I was reminded of was uh, the commercial in regards to the, the, the Baines, the Baines, uh, Baines deal, you know, Baines uh -huh. after with reference to the clo closure, if you will, of this of this particular plant and, and the, well, the and, husband and that, said that, his wife mm -hmm. died, blah, blah, blah. That, yeah, that's what I'm and saying. And there's a stress. I mean, I'm sort of and, reminded of, in all due respect, I'm reminded of the custodians here locally. Remember that? Yes. The, I went down there many times with the custodians. Custodians, custodians, if you will. And, I agreed with the custodians. And they lost all their jobs, especially when they were looking at retirement age, et cetera, et cetera. And, 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 and it was, it was well, tough. And, then and, it and some of these folks, and, were, and, they were deceased. And that goes right into um, Detroit. He would yeah. have rather seen all the Detroit cars and everything go away than to sit down and actually work it out, and he even said so. So how many of the other businesses that were Bain businesses, he could have looked at a different direction instead of outsourcing them and instead of the jobs going away you're, and you're actually not, keeping them? Not, the and, you're, talking, you're not a D, so what, are you? Are you what, Democrat, Democrat or Republican? Which are, which are you? Well, right now I'm talking about facts, but I'm a, I'm a lifelong progressive Democrat. Oh, proud well, of it. well. You, you, but you, so, so you have a comparison of when he said, no, the jobs would go away in Detroit. Right, right. Don't save it. Don't do this. Right, right, and, right. and instead... They were saved. So then you go back to, okay, he is talking about his leadership and his skills as a business person, right. right? Well, if you're going with the skills as a business person, then you go directly to his job. How many of those could he have saved if he would have looked at him differently? And the thing is, is that he looks through the glass well, Sharon, in a different manner. This is politics. Manner. This is politics. I mean, if you're on one it, side, I'm, I'm not going to agree with you. I, I know no, because I expect you to be voting for you're Obama because you're me. a level-headed man. You're not going to agree with me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's politics. <laughs> well, yeah, Unfortunately, we're well, not at the table. So all we can do is get what we get from the tube or the radio, this uh, TV, right? right? Right. Well, no, but those are two That's comparisons. That's what these monies are being spent for. Those are two very, very real comparisons. I've got and, some ideas of how they should both run their race. Oh, so do I. Oh, okay, we'll have to good. get together well, on look, that. Now, now that we've done that, and so we'll, <laughs> we'll consult with Tom again, because he's, he's, all, he's always brilliant. You know, the R&R and D&D &D is just really brilliant. It's just, I, I like that. Now, now that we've done that, uh, just getting right back to home, if you will. Yes, got a lot going on. As you know, when you start talking about the Columbia River um, crossing, if you will, and then just being from a layman's standpoint here in the Portland metropolitan area, this, that's the sort of uh, how do you get across the Columbia from Washington to Oregon? Mm -hmm. uh, just well, basic stuff, just frank, just basic stuff, and that's what the argument's all about. So naturally, you need money to build a bridge. They, they talk about bottleneck and all this, that, and the other. But the bottom line is that uh, we've been discussing this issue, consulting it at a hundred, at tune of one hundred and fifty million dollars to date, mm -hmm. if not more, if mm -hmm. you will. And there's no bridge, and there's no sign of a bridge. I mean, there's and a there's lot no of design there's of a no bridge. Design of a bridge. <laughs> but but you know the thing that gets me, and that's why that's why I want you on this piece to come and get the background work. You know. You look like there's a small segment of folks talking about this issue, mm -hmm. but you don't see Oregon talking about this issue. They're not familiar with what's going on. You know. Well, the, the well, Oregon legislators so? were cut out of and the. And Washington. What about well, Oregon, Washington? The, both. Well, Oregon and Washington are both having oversight committees, but the Oregon legislators have been cut out of the conversation for years. And you have to remember that the citizen panel and the locally preferred alternative ended in August of 2008. So for four years, we haven't had any citizen panels or conversations. Hmm. And the, the, the sponsors council that meets was handpicked by the governor. And in Washington- For both states. Uh, for both states. And in Washington, the, the Tim Levitt, the current mayor, was not allowed to be the uh, representative of his own city. They, he, mm -hmm. they picked uh, Harris, a councilwoman Harris, you know, the one that had the meltdown, councilwoman Harris, to represent on the CRC the city of Vancouver because he was up, she was upset that he ran on no tolls. Mm -hmm. And even though he immediately 
changed his mind and is now 100% in bed with tolls, um, he didn't get appointed to it. So it was, it's very political how that was appointed. So yeah, but, 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 on the but, Oregon but, side, but, but let's get a point. on the Oregon side, wait, the wait conversation minute, before, no, hasn't wait happened. Minute, wait a minute, before you go into that piece, because we get now we're getting into the mechanics of it all. The fact of the matter is both governors are basically the chair. The governor's seat is the chair, if you will, of this whole issue about the CRC. Well, only now. Wait a second. Only because they took that position on. In the document, the check. no, no, okay. no, in, no, they aren't. In the in the documentation that started the Columbia River Crossing project, okay, okay, who signed it, off on it? It has sponsoring agencies. There are three of them, and then and then there are sponsor. Excuse me, there are two of them, and then there's sponsor count, and the sponsor agencies and the ODOTs. So the agencies, which is CTRAN, RTC, Metro, and TriMet two regions, regionally councils and two transportation councils have total say over it if they would stand up and be that so way the with governor, their boards. So you're saying and the, 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 the governors of both states didn't... I, and the governors of both states are the third representatives it. as the transportation departments, but they are all equal to each other. RTC, Southwest Regional Transportation Council, can say, you do this or I'm out of it, and it's okay. over. Any one of them independently can do that and have a large amount you said of say. three of them. Yes. And RTC, what's the others? RTC and Metro are both regional transportation councils. CTRAN and TriMet are both the buses. Okay. And then you have ODOT and WADOT. They are equal. The governors and have no taken. there's no chairperson of that whole, that, that, that whole piece. No. The governors have taken the lead. But that, they took the lead. That does not mean that they are the ones in charge. And they are only in charge because the DOTs are in, have led it. The other agencies, they could say the DOTs have not done a good job. And we think that there are enough people at RTC that understands that, that RTC should now hire a supplemental environmental Who's impact statement. Who's shelling out the money? I hear what you're saying. Who's shelling Washington out the money? Washington has paid more than Oregon. Who's shelling out what department? The treasurer. What who was this? The Treasury Departments from are, in Oregon, they have gotten it through maintenance and operations, the regular direct wait, budget. Wait, 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 wait. Are you okay, saying notice that the all the potholes. Each state are basically signing off on the checks. Is that what you're saying? Each state is providing money. Exactly who signs off would most likely be the treasurer. But what I'm saying is is in Oregon, instead of going to the elective body and going through the regular channels of having the, the senators have an elective body that's an oversight committee that looks at this group and then gives them money and they come back and they answer things and does oversight the whole time and then they keep giving them more money is normally how it happens. Instead, wait, 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 ODOT wait, 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 has been... Giving them more money. Who are you saying that? Are you talking about the Giving a study, a study. So if you're having a study, usually they go to the Oregon legislators and they say, we want to do this study and we need some money. And then they say, okay, here's the money and we are assigning you an oversight committee. What has happened is, is ODOT did not go and say, this is what they want, to, we want to do. What they did was, is they got their maintenance and operations money and have been using their maintenance and operations who, money. By whom? ODOT has. ODOT. So has they're the one that's to, signing the checks. To, yes. Not the treasurer. You, you well, made the point about the treasurer. Yes. Signing. They, it, it's coming out of ODOT's budget. Okay. And WashDOT. And, well, Washtut does it differently, but ODOT, the reason you said why didn't we have a conversation in Oregon is the reason is there was no committee set up to look into it. So all this time, legislators have thought the committees were looking into it because that's what's normal. Instead, they circumvented the legislative body and who, having who? ODOT did. Okay. and have been getting all of their money out of maintenance and operations, which is why we have more potholes and signs that say report potholes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Because the money that is, is used for maintenance me, and operations were used me, for study this, instead. This is, this is confusing. I be, I'm sorry, I'm trying. Right? No, no, this is confusing. Okay. I would like to, I mean, who is signing the checks? And you're saying the governor not in, involved in this process in either state. And it's only washed out and over. I, I said they were not in charge. They're involved, but they're, they're not in charge. So who's in charge? You're saying now these these committees well, that were put up by the I'm still kind of confused. If Can the sponsor if the sponsor agencies were acting correctly, the sponsor agencies are equally responsible and they choose locally preferred alternative 
Hello. They choose locally uh, local agencies called sponsoring agencies so that they can look into the local issues. And so, but the local sponsor agencies that are sponsoring them have a certain responsibility each independently. Now, had they been, if they have acted like a like leadership, they would have set up a subcommittee and they would be looking into things all along and they would have known. What has happened is that, that the, the subcommittees weren't set up with the, the, with the other groups, the RTC and Metro and CTRAN and stuff like that, because they expected ODOT and WADOT to be handling all of it. Well, that's who's doing it, right? Yes. I mean, what, what you're but, thinking, but, what should be, and what, what is, is two different situations. Good to Welcome, see you. Welcome, Bob. How you doing? Okay. Come on, Bob. Yeah. I know he, he's up there looking at the bridge. I told him to go out take that bridge. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to see you. Oh, no. <laughs> represent, represent we, we, well. we were just discussing why no, no, the just, Oregon on, was not okay. as, yeah. as, as, no. Specifically, as in, no, here we are. engaged, the concern, and it's because yeah. no committee was set up because they didn't go through regular channels. They went around the regular channels Sharon. and took their money out okay, of the Sharon, maintenance the, operation. The concern is this. Yes, sir. The public was concerned about the $150 million being spent to date on a bridge mm -hmm. to nowhere. <laughs> okay. Well, now a project to that, nowhere. So it's not that, even the bridge. So, the, so the, the, the question was, who signs the checks? You got Washington and Oregon as part, 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 part. Does the governor sign the check? Does WashDOT sign the check? I mean, do they give them the, okay, you, they, do they have to sign off and say, okay, fine, sign the check? Uh, the governor? And WashDOT or the governor? No, and no, no, okay. no, no, no. So, the, the, the money is allocated by, by the legislators to ODOT okay. as ODOT's maintenance and operations budget. And then what they did was is they took the maintenance and operations budget and they have been studying CR Columbia River Crossing out of the maintenance and operations budget. Okay. Had they gone through the normal process of going to the legislators and saying, we're doing this with maintenance and operations and legislators, we want to have this study. And they'll say, you do? And they say, yes, well, we give you this money and then we give you this committee that goes with the study money that's going to be checking on you regularly. And then you come back every once in a while and they check on you. And that's what you're saying, that that's that what they should do. That is the normal process. But that's not and what, what they have mm -hmm. just found out in last year when they set up the Oregon Oversight Committee was all of these years, ODOT has been taking their money out of maintenance and operations and all of these years, the legislative body thought that there was an oversight committee set up that was regularly checking them and regularly getting money. And it wasn't until they attached a budget note to ODOT saying, we are setting up an oversight committee and we're looking at all these different things, tolling, which is why they found the $500 million uh, hole in the tolling or or that they're saying they're gonna get 90% light rail when they find out it's actually more like 60% you get. Um, and they're finding out, well, it's not 20,000 jobs, it's actually 1,900 jobs. Mm -hmm. It went down by 90% jobs. It, you don't hear people standing up and screaming. Or the fact that light rail not only doesn't do what a bus does, but part of the savings is you have one person driving a huge light rail and it's five buses, where in the future you would have had five bus drivers and it's more flexible and so forth. So anyways, so back to the money part, I beg your pardon. So, so the, the legislators usually when they give money, they give oversight. And there has been no oversight until last year when it was set up because they used maintenance and operations and have been putting up metal wait, wait, signs Bob, that say potholes. Bob, Bob, you, you understand what you're saying? I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Uh, what is he saying? Well, what she, basically what she's saying <laughs> is that the budget for the budget for trans, for the, uh, what is it called? Um, the Columbia River the, Crossing the, uh, CRC. Oh, the ODOT. The ODOT. The ODOT budget. That the government, that the uh, legislature, legislature gives, ODOT. was to ODOT, and they have an, they have uh, yeah, yeah. some oversight over that budget. Okay. But what ODOT did was take some money from that budget mm -hmm. and use it. That wasn't the dedicated. Commonly, but that wasn't de was used, dedicated to CRC. Well, right? uh, their budget is dedicated it's for them flexible. to use. It's flexible, and so they used it for the Columbia River crossing uh, to get to get things started, but. If the legislature had, a, if legislature had given them money just for Columbia River crossing, it would have came with an oversight okay. and all these things that they are finding out five years later 
would have been taken care of mm -hmm. four years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, am I correct? So yeah, where are we now? Very, thank you. Okay. Right. So where are we now? I mean, that's, that's how confused it is. Well, yeah, uh, no. Yeah, but uh, okay. <laughs> so now Oregon and Washington have both set up legislative oversight committees. Tomorrow, actually, the Washington will be meeting. Um, what they're now doing is is they're finding out things like the the bridge height. Is too low. It was well, not only too low, but 95 isn't as low as it is. It turned out they averaged the water instead of going to the high high of the water and going up. They averaged the water, so sometimes it's as low as 75. Okay, the current Glen Jackson is 144. The current bridge is 179. So it's a, almost 100. It's 100 feet less than what we currently have, and it's almost half. And then it's almost half of what the Glen Jackson is. And then you so. Here is the thing is, is all, all these marine jobs we're known for building ports and, and pleasure crafts and all kinds of things are on one side. Well, they're saying, well, we'll just move them all. Hmm. Well, first off, uh, there's hundreds of jobs. It's really good jobs. There's not that much port water. Hmm. But that also limits us in the future to have jobs. It not only is not meeting the current needs, but it's not meeting the future needs. And the bridge is structurally sufficient, meets all requirements, mm -hmm. has 60 years of life left. It is appraised value between a half a million, billion and one billion dollars. It can be seismically retrofitted for 50 million to 125 million. Okay. Has no repairs that are required. Okay, let, me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, here we are. Here we are sitting here today. Yes, sir. Let's go back a step. Okay. First off, Sharon Nassie. How did you get involved in this process? Got a little yellow card in the mail. How long, how long ago was that? In 2000. In 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. 2000. Okay, 2012. That's 12 years, right? That's 12 years. Okay, and then so you got involved, right? You gave up your career, so to speak, right? I, I have the last couple of years. The, the real estate market had been so much lower for a long but 12 time. 12 years, 12 years. That's a long 12 time. 12 years is a long okay, time. So, so doing that particular process, how did you get involved? What, what, what did you do? Um, I, I received a little yellow card in the mail that says we're trying to do something for I-5. I live right next to the freeway, okay. and I grew up in North Portland. Um, and I was like, oh, I was a kid, I was a mall crawl. We'd go up North Portland Road out to the stockyards, and you could go straight across. And we used to say, why didn't this bridge just go straight across instead of having to wander back over? Okay. So I, um, my mother had just passed away, and I was having a problem with depression. And so, you know, you're supposed to look at other people so I went out took a whole bunch of pictures I thought oh this will be good called it the Northwest Passage put it in the northwest part of town the, it'll be the anniversary of the boys walking <coughs> out here in well and Kagawea. Um, in, in, in 1905 we had a World's Fair we could build this bridge it's trade it's transportation cool so then so I entered the process of the of the I-5 task force project was accepted in. I-5 task force. Now, who, made up of whom? Uh, the I-5 task force had 28 people. It's made up of Oregon and Washington. It was a bi-state uh, oversight committee, or, or excuse me, transportation study committee. You got committee. a point to that? Or you have? Uh, no, I, my project was accepted into it. What now? The, the project that I had developed was accepted into it as alternative, West Alternative option number eight. Okay, now you're sitting at the table. Uh, no, mm -hmm. and then then they're they're all looking at it. I'm still in the room hollering, "Hey, you guys!" No, I also represented the North Portland Business Association chair as a as a as a community forum leader. So I was in one of the communi community. So you're active, is it now? You active? You're, I'm you're active. active. You're knocking and on so doors. I'm out there knocking on doors. I'm taking people on train rides. You've seen now, two or three. Talk of my about train the rides. makeup of that particular group that you were talking about. The 28 of them. Yes. Uh, it had uh, both of the ports. It had the mayors of both uh, Oregon and Washington. At that time, it was Katz and Pollard. It had uh, uh, it had the uh, Clark County Clark County commissioners on it. It had Washington County commissioners on it. It had some trucking people on it. Um, it had Jerry Sunball William with the environmental justice on it. It had uh, Multnomah County. Yep, Multnomah County was on it. Um, and that's Primet was an advisor. Yep. Fred was on it. He was on the board. Yeah, well, he was on I the board. Remember, you, you I remember that. that. You remember yeah, this? Uh, Fred, Fred was on it. We met over at, at over here at the um, okay, empowerment let's, building. Okay. The, uh, so now you're having the discussion. Entrepreneur. You're having the discussions, right? We're having discussions. Okay. And we money, go through the study. Money being spent. You guys are you looking at that uh, money for a study that costs about eighteen thousand, and they had lots of maps and good information and data, and you can still go there. And what they said was, I five was over capacity, the same thing that had been said in the nineteen eighties. 
adding another lane would not do any good because all of the adjacent streets to it and neighborhood streets were already over capacity dangerously so and i-5 even if they built two more lanes there's that much traffic that runs on the sides of it um, that it wouldn't do any good. And all kinds of renderings, right? all sorts of renderings. All kinds of renderings. And that they should look at strategically locating in other places. And one of the places they looked at was where my project was, which is over, where our, our project, excuse me, was over it, by the railroad tracks, which is uh, often called the port to port. That location has already been identified in transportation studies for years and adopted in regional transportation plans. So all that's needed is a location environmental impact statement. And that location was going to be built on for a very long time until the light rail issue came through several times. And um, don't want to really say this, but they could put light rail on the third bridge by running it through the new part of downtown Vancouver that they're doing. Run it over our thing and shoot a hole right through you, and you're into the jumping, You're Island. jumping ahead. Sorry. We got 12 years. I'm just saying, here we are today. Yes. So then I went million to the and two we other projects. So what, what happened? I mean, you were in all those discussions. I mean, what, what were you hearing from the folks from that group, that panel? Uh, what happened? Then Bob, I want to get Bobby. What, what happened was is for <laughs> a while so we had honest, fair data that said we have fewer bridges in similar sized cities. We have to add capacity. And at that time, they didn't know the condition of the bridge. Now they know the condition of the bridge has 60 years of life left. It can be seismically retrofitted for between 50 as million and 125. Win, They've known that since 202. 202. Yeah. And so when we come into this process, the CRC has made statements that are inaccurate. And the CRC, give me the definition. Columbia River Crossing staff. They named themselves after the bridge. The who, bridge who, is who actually. Who appointed that group? Uh, they are a a outside consultant that is hired by ODOT and WashDOT in a non-competitive bid that was supposed to be less than $50 million and is now closer to $150 million. Bob, you want to come in? You were on say, the board uh, at the time. I was on the board, but um, in, one of the yeah. things that happened is that they took staff from um, TriMet and staff from um, what's it, uh, C-Tran. C-Tran, okay. And they're using them on the Columbia River Crossing uh, okay. uh, group as well. And one of the things that has happened is that, you know, we always talk about study it to death. Mm -hmm. And this is what has happened with this project. Number one, uh, when they came before us, as when I sat on the board, one of the gentlemen from down at, at uh, Swan, I, I mean at the island, that, was, that had a construction they did barge, bar, barges, barge, okay. mm -hmm. and they were going to move him. Mm -hmm. First Federino. And but they didn't, but they didn't know where. Mm -hmm. And then they talked about moving him east. I think that is on the river uh, on uh, way. And he came to us again, and he said, "Well, the people that work for me live in Vancouver and Portland and Washington County. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to move me." 20, 30 miles down the road is going to make it difficult for me to keep the people that I have, make it uh, the area you want to put me in is not conducive to what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so he went on and on. So all of a sudden there, then they came to us with the design and how it was going to twist and, and turn through uh, uh, the island. And that's when uh, she was on before. And I asked, so I went back to the board. Sharon, and I, Sharon, was, Sharon was on. I went back to the board and I asked the question: Has anyone looked at North Portland? Uh, if we're trying to to give room for more automobiles, one or two things you can do: you can build a, a, a bridge coming across over in the north side right. that would eliminate all those trucks going through North Portland. Right. And take them through land on the on the north side of Which the river. Available that's available uh, and so you'll, you'll kill some of the emissions, you'll give more capacity for automobiles on this, mm -hmm. on this uh, road. Has anyone looked at that? Dead silence in the room and nothing else was done. Now that was about what? That, was that, yeah, that two was, weeks ago? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was 10 years, 12 about, years ago? That was about four years ago. Four years ago, when, when yeah. you were on the board? When I was on the board. About four to five what years. What happened, Sharon? When, were you there part of that, discuss, uh, that, that response that Bob gave? Um, I, no, but I know that dead silence in the room. Um, <laughs> The Clark County Commissioners have came out with a letter that no, our project was never studied or vetted. And the Southwest Washington Regional Transportation have come out with that statement too. 
even though our project was brought in and was given the name uh, RC14 and um, they used our name by State Industrial Corridor, which was the name I used at that time. Uh, and recently at the May hearings in Salem, they put our map up, that's a 211 map that engineers made, and up on the thing and said this was studied and it wouldn't work. And it's like uh, what they studied was an arterial that went from the port of Vancouver to Marine Drive which was less than a mile long. And an arterial is, thank you, is 900 vehicles per lane, okay? It carried 48,000 vehicles and was full upon opening. 48,000 is actually one third of the 135 on this current bridge. But ours was is a freeway carrying 2,200 vehicles per lane, not 900, and doesn't have stop signs and a lift like that one did. And ours goes all the way to Highway 30 and a tunnel into Swan Island and is seven okay. miles long. Okay. Well, look, look, look at we're going to take a short break and so I can kind of get myself together here. <laughs> because this is, is because all, and all this time, money is being spent. Oh, yeah. And they're having all kinds of meetings and whatever. But what I'm understanding is the contractor got paid. There was a, there was a competitive bid process. His name wasn't, was David Evans. And so he, he basically, well, the, the consultant basically mm -hmm. said, they, they told the consultant, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And we found one. And he was out there doing his job. Right. So the $150 million, he just spent the money based on what they, he was told to do. Right. And that's, the, that's one of the things we need to clear up right now. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it was basically done by some of these folks that were sitting down there having these meetings. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with you folks. We'll go, we'll go to phase two. <laughs> we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Yes, my folks, and, and we've got uh, we got Bob Williams here, and we got Sharon Nassett here. Sharon is supposed to be the, the, the well, basically, you guys have been involved in this process for a whole while. But but over the last 30 minutes or so that we've been talking about what's going on, it's still as confusing as it was before. But one thing we have learned, we have learned about the fact that the monies were spent, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in many ways, the contractor was reacting to those the, those, those talks. 
the change order. The, the change order. Was, the change order. Given. So he yeah. was legitimately basically being told, hey, I want you to take this one out. You take this one out. And he, so you can't really blame the contractor. No. It's the uh, people who basically. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He was given the job. Yeah. Now, if, you, if you're if you saying you want to change the contract, you come out with another RFP, mm. and you do it again. You just can't sit up there and say the contractor you did this, this, that, and the other. Now, now, the thing is, we need to go back to those people who are having those meetings and say, okay. And say, why do you keep giving the change orders? Because they have lots and lots of change orders, and each change order was millions of dollars right. more. And so and who was ultimately was, responsible? Well, are the governor was, of each state responsible? No, it was now, CRC saying, itself that see, would say it needed more money. Who appointed and would just say, CRC? Then you say the legislature. Well, who at the legislature oh, appointed oh, oh, Okay. So now, what, I mean, let's not get too more involved. In I, I, I won't. Get back. But one of the things to ask is to go to ODOT and say at the beginning of the year you had a budget that said you needed this much money. ODOT who? Who at ODOT? The, the people who set the ODOT budget. So you say at this part of the year when you came into the legislature you see it needed this much money and you're going to do this much on each of these projects. And then at the end of the year you need to look at it and say, okay, what did you actually do with that money? Did you do it on each, this much money on each of those projects or did you just shift it around? And they need to look from 205 well, until Sharon, now. Sharon, we don't have no projects. Years. We're just talking. $150 exactly. million. Was just talking. But, it wasn't no project. But if it, it was just if it, change orders like Bob was saying. But if, no project. if it started out, the whole thing was supposed to be $50 million with $15 million coming from the federal government. And we're change now, orders. And now we've had change orders to the fact that uh, hundred million dollars worth of change orders. Hundred, hundred fifty million dollars. No, a hundred, no. yeah, a hundred million dollars worth of change orders. Mm -hmm. Well, in the, those change orders, so if you started out the beginning of the year, you said I'm going to give you five million dollars, and then all of a sudden it didn't work out at the end of the year. Well, you still had the same budget, so you've given them five million, but then you have to give them an extra five million. You had to take it off of certain projects throughout the state. No, no, they have to no, keep no, back change orders. orders. So yeah. you have to see which parts of the state were losing what. And I understand what you're talking about, stain or change orders. And next week, this is a good cue in, next week, Tiffany Couch, a forensic accountant who's been looking at those change orders, who's the person who found out right. that there was 100,000 of them, will be here on the show. Right, right. And will it be. will be important to be hearing all the numbers and facts. Because well, in all due respect, and and what I want to do, I'd like to see the signature on the checks. Well, no, orders. you want to see the signature that asked for the money yeah. and exactly. the ones and, that and gave them the money without and, and question here, here is asking it. for anything in return over the last 12 years. And who, who, but, Bob, who, what, but what I'm hearing, after you said what you said in regards to the guy who had this barge business, right. talking about his employees, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, you made that statement. Everybody was quiet. Someone there said, okay, fine. We need to put in but this change order. Get, is there any way something. around his That's business? Right. That's right. But, that was but, but, and so now here's a million dollars they're going to spend. They should have known that's, that yeah, that's, ahead of time. No, no, no. That's, that's, no, that's no, no. Not, because the, no, they the had million dollars was spent yeah. with the change order. Yes. Well, and they've and they've offered uh, uh, them new furniture and new this and that mm -hmm. and a whole new office yeah. and all kinds yeah. of. Oh yes. Yeah. But but. The, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you get the change order. We, we, yeah. Now let's well, go, let's go from the hundred and fifty million. Well, the thing <laughs> the thing that happens in government that most people need to understand on. is that you end up with a contract, and in that contract it has a provision for changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you order, a, so I'm going down this straight street, but there's a brick in this road that it will cost me $100,000 to move this brick. And if I go around it, it won't disturb the natural habitat mm -hmm. over here, but I can go around it, but it's going to go cost me forty, uh, ninety thousand $90,000. So which way do I go? Well, I take the, the $10,000 less path, and I go around it. Well, in this situation, every time they come into, uh, they came up on an obstacle in the road, it cost them a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. evidently, so far, they've had 15 to 20 or 150 of these things, you know. And so why the, the million dollars? changes that's the question exactly and most why of, and, the hundred and, the, uh, why the million dollar and, changes? and i have seen Somebody's many of those though. work oh, order yeah. changes whose and many, pocket is getting filled here many of those work order changes say nothing other than they need more money yeah. honest yeah but the contract and, 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 but the scope the scope no but the scope tell me what you tell me what you want i'll tell you how much the scope had but the scope has not changed and when you look at it the scope is exactly still the same you can't blame the contractor though no 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 i've seen the scope 
This, it, it's okay. You invite somebody in to come and do your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want four walls. I want this and that. I want this kind of oven and stuff like that. And they yeah. run into a little problem here or there every once in a while and stuff like that. But they're still just doing your kitchen. Right. But all of a sudden, they keep having these huge change orders of all these huge amounts. But they haven't changed it from what the original thing is. is they're just doing your kitchen. It just costs three but times Sharon, more. We're mm -hmm. not even talking about something physical. We're just mm -hmm. talking about talks to people just sitting yes. in the meetings and so, saying, I don't like this and I don't like this. And I'm looking at a rendering. You know, I don't like this my line. Question then becomes, Send it back. Yeah. My question <laughs> then becomes, at what point do you say, wait a minute. Yes. This isn't working. Why? We are now at that point. And but it's $150 million right. later. And, and still spending But that money. is still yeah. better than $3 billion and $10 billion later, which we could be Well, the number one, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have been able to here. spend that money right. because when they got ready to build that bridge mm -hmm. and uh, the Corps of Engineers looked at those specs, they wouldn't, they, you'd, you'd still be at this point yeah. because now they got to go in and try to figure out how they're going to move ship traffic under this bridge that is two feet too low at regular tide, at the average tide. If the tide rises, mm -hmm. or the, the water rises, I should say, it, there's nothing they can do. I mean, even if it's a lift bridge, if they were thinking of that, it would still be too low. Then number two, the environmental, pack stu an environmental study gives them a certain depth which holds a certain amount so if they go higher, they probably have to dig more. What's the environmental impact statement does uh, is going? What is going to happen to the empire? The uh, impact statement, because of the water temperature changes, the more concrete you pour and in that fish. water. So and you, the birds. I mean, the it's just it's going to be a regular, regular mess. Well, look again at the same time. You know, it's not our personal. It, it is our personal money. It better be. But, yeah. the, <laughs> but the, the money is being spent on OPM, other people's money. Yes. That's the logo. Well, the, the, the decisions, money. the decisions to spend. That's right. Is it because it's, they that's don't right. see it coming out of their pocket? That, that's right. Oh well, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, maybe we need um, contract Mr. to do this. Mr. One. Broussard, yes. will you? More than glad to. You, by the way, <laughs> I, I'll just send you the bill. Yeah. Uh, why don't you email me what you want? N no problem. <laughs> okay. Whatever you think you can. And by the way, back up, back that Charlie over here. You come to me and yeah. tell me what he would like to have, uh, and we'll put it together. And I'll contract this out. Yeah, my my yeah. contract. And, hey, so that's the way it's done. <laughs> and it's unfortunate, you know what I mean, that we're doing it this way. Oh, we, yeah. we do need the job. We want the jobs, if you will. We want the we want the bottleneck to be eliminated. Right. You know, we got the pollution. Well, and that is the stuff. problem. But is the bottom line is, we got a bunch of lay folks just sitting around the table, just talking about everything that they. No, the but in the twelve it's years, not these the lay people folks, have changed. It's ODOT and WADOT that's the problem, and the people have changed so much that they don't know what's going on, yeah. and they're afraid they to going. ask the questions because they they don't want to appear that they don't know the answer right. and so they have staff around them who who has a specific goal and they don't ask any questions because everybody's gone away but they don't know any answers either because they don't want to look like they don't uh fit in as the elected official well, you they got, are you got washed out no doubt you got the board you got the board mm -hmm. right you got the board mm -hmm. these are lay folks that are being appointed by the governor right of each but, state but here's the problem there. they're not engineers over the 12 years it's These people have over changed, and over and, and over, and they are over. changing yearly. Right, that's right. Yeah, and sometimes faster than that. Right, right, right. And so someone comes in, they, uh, they, you're sitting there and you're trying to get the gist of what's going on, because really and truly, you don't want to catch this northbound mule by yeah. the south end. Right, 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 right. And so, you shut up, and then you get you go off and you ask someone a question. And they give you their answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you are one of their team members. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome to government. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so. But then, after you're there for a few few days, or etc. Uh, a few. Then you, and then you make a response, and everybody's quiet. Mm -hmm. well, now, wait, we better call him back here. Yeah. And well, talk to only him a if he more. makes him out of out of line. If mm -hmm. he's able to get information that's different, that actually says the truth. Okay. And and the problem is, is that they do take you aside and they tell you specific oh. things, and well, you yeah, think that's the truth because they are the experts. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to open up the line. Oh, no, I, think, I don't think we can. We can't open up the line. I apologize for that. Bob, I'm sorry. I apologize for that, Dave. I apologize. He did tell me that we won't open the line. So, so we got to educate the public out here yes. a little bit so, more because, well, you know. Bruce, the thing that has to happen is that the public has to get involved. Right. I mean, you're going to hear all kind of things, and you're going to get the postcard. Mm-hmm. 
with basic, with three or four bullet points. And it's them sending you the message they want you to repeat. Mm -hmm. You have to be smart enough as a person living in this corridor and outside the corridor, you have to be smart enough to say, when is the meeting? And, of course, the meeting will be at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or citizen comment was usually week. at 4 o'clock yeah. Monday through During Friday. During the week. Yeah. During the week. Not on weekends. <laughs> no. Not at night. No. Okay. But what about those elected officials, the, you know, the, the legislature? We got a legislature, right? Most of them don't know. They don't Thank know. you. Most of them do not know. Do not know. At all. I went and visited with 70 of them face-to-face, -face, and the majority of them thanked me and said, gee, I had no clue about most of this. Mm-hmm. Well, because there was no committee set up and they all think that somebody is watching over it with their committee. They're mm -hmm. not used to anybody going around it. And at first when I said that there was no sit committee set up and I went to the the hearing, uh, Representative Bentz looked at me like I was, you know. Bentz from Washington? At Bentz in Oregon. In Oregon. That's Benton in Washington. Mm -hmm. I, I said, look, I said, they came in. You know they need money. There is no ask in your budget from ODOT for CRC. If there is no ask and you know they need money, how are they getting money except out of their general budget, hmm. out of their maintenance and operations? Right. There is no oversight. They have been getting their money all this time. And after that hearing, I was at, I mentioned that if, you know, would I be interested in talking with the chair? Love to. Go and talk with him. And he said at first he didn't think that that was true. And then when he looked at it, he realized all these years he just thought somebody was doing oversight. Mm -hmm. Because every once in a while they come in and talk to the transportation people, ODOT, WADOT. He had no clue that all these years there's been no oversight. And neither did the other elected officials. And to do myself a favor and walk around and talk with them. And that's when I went and visited 70 of them, nose to nose, in seven LAs. And you know, the majority I, of them didn't when, when know. I, as I listen to the conversation, and I think in the contract, construction, but it hasn't been the kind, you love to get those, uh, those cost plus contracts. Mm -hmm. You love to have sure. well, basically. You know, you know, whatever it costs, they send you the change order, and I just do all kinds of things. People can do anything they want but, with a contract. But and but they send the bill in, they pay it. But, but they but can't question it because they don't know anything about it. There's restrictions on the cost plus, and What's there that? wasn't. There's supposed to be restrictions no. when you go. No, no you, when you, you go past you a certain percentage. Yeah, you have to what, go back to your board. Well, they don't have a board. They didn't have a. They when, didn't have an oversight when, committee. Exactly. When, so they could do what they let, want. Let me, let me tell you something. <laughs> if you get a main slide on the main highway during the snow time. And they give you a cost plus contract. Do you think that once they, they, they say, okay, fine, here's the estimate, do you think that when out there digging, all of a sudden they see a big, big hole, they're going to wait and go down to the committee and ask them? No. To that? No. The cost plus is whatever it takes. You just yeah, do the job. Right. But, but you also have percentages of how high those cost plus yeah, I'm just trying to go. tell you, it don't work that way. It don't work that it's way. It's supposed to. Yeah, it's supposed don't to, but cost plus oh. is get the job done. That's, That's why yes. you'll find that TriMet has, has, has kind of went away from cost plus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went to, uh, oh, uh, they rather have you give me an estimate right. of what right. my change is right. going to be. Because that's yeah. a change in what we want you to do. Uh, when we did uh, light rail into downtown Portland and found out that, man, nobody has touched a wire underneath mm -hmm. the groundwork yep. in downtown mm -hmm. Portland since mm -hmm. it was built. And guess what? That contractor said. <laughs> and so the contractor was going to, you know, it was going to be outlandish yeah. what oh, they yeah. wanted to call. Mm -hmm. And we told him, said, no, we'll get somebody else. And yeah. he, his cost went down. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. we had had cost plus. plus he, he yes, would have just been signing the check and, and in most cases, on. in most cases, in all due respect, yeah. government is a prime target for cost plus oh, because sure. it's other people's money. So yeah. what? Give them a cost plus contract. Most of these maintenance folks that are that basically that are on call, mm -hmm. if you will, to do mm -hmm. highway work and this, that, and the other on a cost cost plus contract. Call you middle of the night, this, that, and the other, and they send you the bill. All right. Supervisor, there, hey, no problem. Change orders, no problem, right? And I don't have to set up a committee. I don't That's have right. to have nine That's right. phone calls. That's right. That's right. I don't have to call anyone. That's right. That's because it. Yep. your job is to take care That's of the right. problem. Take care of the problem. That's yep. very simple. Yeah. Okay. So, hey. okay, now that we've gotten over that, that particular piece, now where are you now? What are you doing now? I understand you've opened up an office up in Vancouver, and what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the reason for that? What's the rationale? Well, we do. Well, f first off, uh, Third Bridge now. 
uh, is a, a officially a 501c3 nonprofit. Third Bridge Now, okay. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to the website thirdbridgenow.com. And you can see your project. And you can see our project, and you can also donate to us because we're now a 501c3, so you can take it off your taxes. And that's really mm -hmm. important because we've been uh, doing a lot of ed education and a lot of work for a long time, and we – and. Um, there's a lot of work in, to get out there and a lot of information to get out there. Who's involved? Who's and we involved need in funding. the Third Bridge Project? You um, know, well, there's, there's, there's been a lot of businesses and people involved, in, and our policy has been that you can say you're involved with us, we will not out you. Um, because of, of the political climate of the Columbia River crossing and everything else, and, and one of the things about being. Sounds like the presidential election. <laughs> <laughs> Just two weeks from now. Yeah. <laughs> Only the chicken guy got yeah. frustrated we enough do to have, say something. We, we have an office in downtown Vancouver at uh, 311 Evergreen Boulevard. Okay. Um, and it's right in downtown Vancouver. And across, on it, the big sign, there's a yellow and red sign. And you're going to have to laugh. It says, uh, uh, Columbia River Crossing Alternatives. Okay. And that's because there are two or three alternatives, as you know, that were not studied. And it's just not right for us to choose something for others, uh, just like it's not right for them to have chose for us. So we're putting in information about the alternatives, such as as rail, such as common sense solution alternative, the third bridge, Cascadia, the fact that buses weren't studied. But most of the downtown businesses are just finding out because some of them own the business, but the landlord got the card. Mm -hmm. And they're finding out that they're going to... Are these public funds that you have? Uh, would love public funds. We, oh, can, no, we no, qualify no, for grants Are you getting... No, funds? but we would love staff, and we love volunteers and help, and anybody that could write grants and um, as soon as possible. And the purpose of which help. is to educate the public about what is. Educate the public about what alternatives there are, mm -hmm. recommend some of the alternatives. Architectural engineers, you put renderings together and... Uh, mostly to ha to have ODOT and WADOT do their job, which is they are supposed to pay for that study because it's extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. We did a small benefit analysis study that cost us $28,000. Very, very small. That is also on our website. And ODOT and WADOT, that is their job. And so what we're trying to do is get them to do a supplement, a supplemental environmental impact statement, very, very common, including after record of decision. And what that means is you take 95% of the data as reusable and you say, okay, it did this with this, so if we did it here, what would happen? And we know that the other alternatives were not studied and looked at, and so that needs to happen before we go forward with the project anyway. You know, you know, Bob, right before you got, you got here, one of the reasons why we were doing this piece, we talked about this piece, was the confusion right. that's out there, and the people don't know what's going on. They're not involved, and there's a lot of money being spent. And when you look around, $150 million boy, could, could have really replaced a lot of potholes and that's and, what I was going to say. Asphalt roads and uh, deal with pollution situations and all kinds of things, if you will. Mm -hmm. And but the public's not aware, and and i.e. the public representative mm -hmm. or the elected officials, right. and if they don't know what's going on, we got who's some doing nurse. their due diligence? Who's doing their due diligence? Mm -hmm. And people are stressed out. The yeah. job situation right here, as you know, we got the whole issue of crime around yeah. this business and this, that, and that. So a, that money could have been used in a very most effective. Well, public public schools, for instance. You know, here we're talking about another mm -hmm. bond measure mm -hmm. to upgrade the schools. So then I'm trying to say, when, when are you going to upgrade the kids mm -hmm. first? That's your <laughs> well, up, upgrade and uh, well, we don't get that. that's yeah. another that's another subject. Well, my they, question, my question on this would be. If it was $150 million spent, how much of it came from Washington? I think $65 million. <laughs> it might have been a, a little more than that. Yeah. You're talking about Washington the state. It's yeah. not a half yes. and half deal. No, Washington the state actually for a long time was further ahead than, than us. Mm -hmm. I think they're further ahead than us by about $15 million. We actually owe money into um, it, Oregon does. And I think Washington has paid uh, $65 million. The federal government paid $15 million, And then we have not paid our share yet. Oregon hasn't, been paid, hasn't, been hasn't paid all of our share yet. You mean the latest check? Right. But before that, they spent, they, they've paid quite a bit of money in this piece. They have paid quite a bit, but mm -hmm. I think they've only paid like... I thought uh, it was 15 million. I thought I, thought I, think, I, I number, thought, 15 I thought, or 20 million. No, they paid like 40, 45 million. Lately? But they, totally, over, over the 12 over the years. Yeah. Over the 12 years. But they're years. still well, behind in what, what they, they have owe. to pay. But it's Thank my understanding you. there was a there, there was a late contribution of late. Of late. Oh, yeah. Yes, but yeah. that contribution took them from owing 35 million to only owing about 10 
we're still behind. Well, you better get on that committee again. No, you might, I don't. You might say no to the money. No, I, well, I, I know I, how to I, say I'm no. Gonna, gonna, Fine, <laughs> I'm going to be talking to him. He needs well, to be one thing, we, one thing we have found out through, through this discussion is the fact that you can't blame the contractor. No. Yes, They you were can. given a contract. No. Well, they you, haven't you, you been honest. Wait, well, wait, wait till honest. next week. Now you got next, some facts? Wait till next, yeah. yeah. Oh, next now, to week. To the contractor. Gonna, it, yes. Now, I understand now. You, I understand. Now, you do understand that the, you understand, understand the cost plus situation. The, there, I understand cost plus, but I also understand you asked them to come into a specific area to deal with a specific thing, and you had a specific dollar amount that it would have cost. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a point where an overrun is one thing, but overrun by 150% is another. And most of the things that they came across, they should have. <laughs> known that they were going to come across in an environmental impact it statement. It don't work that way. Mm -mm. Uh, it yeah. does. Trust me, it don't work that way. Oh, it gentlemen, just wait till next it week. Don't work. I've been in the business long. You've been, you've yeah. been, you've been, you've been listening to all those contracts <laughs> that are being. Well, he was on the board, see, and they have to come up to him bidding on the contract. They got he looking at all the paperwork, and he and he can go just so far, if you yeah. will. And after a certain point, deal, he's trying to say, hey. What, what when they, do? they they used to say uh, the the statement at, at try at, on the board when I was there was Bob is retired so he can read everything. <laughs> <laughs> Rest assured, when yeah. contractors and, and everyone brought stuff to yeah. the board, they knew that w at least one of us was going to read it and have yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And they used to when we would start the board meeting. I remember George used to look at me and go. Oh, not a, not very many yellow marks on here. Good, we might get out of here on time. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> oh no, I'm but, but, I but love you make it. but you make a good point though, because most keep people that are on boards and this that. Oh yeah, they're kind of lazy. They're not engineers. No, you know, all you can do is you can read as best you can. Well, the, the average person on board mm -hmm. don't really read the information. Mm -hmm. They rely on the staff yeah. to tell them what's going on, so that they. Can say yes or no right. based on why right. the staff right. feels. Right, right, right. right. Uh, some of us, you know, we d we we negotiated union contracts, so yes, we understood. Yes, every word. Hey, you better read this. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, uh, right, because right. I, 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 my attitude was, this is my house. Do I want to take care of it? Right. And that's the way right. I treated TriMet. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know. So. Uh, well, look, we got about two minutes at, at best, and um, I thought it was a good discussion. I hope that the public. Uh, got a better feel of what this whole issue about building this bridge across the Columbia River. Right. And we really need to watch, especially now, our monies are really tight, you know, and $150 million, I would hope that we're going to get down to business now and come up with a plan of some sort and say, let's build it. How much it is that going to cost us? That's the key, though. That's the problem. See, um, I but, think but, if we get rid of who we have that's been doing it right now, well, we can turn something around in less okay. than six look, months look. and still meet all of our funding schedule lines. Does she give her a number that you can be reached uh, at, uh, email? Yeah, it's on, it's on the deal, on the screen. Give Sharon, Sharon Nash's number again. Put thank it on the screen well. again. Mm -hmm. Put it on the screen again. I appreciate that. Yes. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you. We want to thank you very much. It's been good. Hopefully the public understand what's going on. We'll have a little bit more. Like I tune in next week. Tune in next week. We're oh, going to have Tiffany here. It'll be a real good show. Oh, okay. very, very good show. And I'll be on time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, folks. As George yeah, Page always said, back to what you believe in. Okay? Have a good one.